I think I see a shooter. I'm looking for big times. That's a shooter. I don't think this hunt at Omaha Indian Reservation is going to be a, a, a cakewalk. I can't take that shot, it's too brushy. In the Midwest, all your gun seasons happen right in a little enclosed area, like say November 12th through the 20th. So to be able to come to the Omaha Indian Reservation and hunt with a rifle in October is a very rare, rare feat. Some of the most sought after whitetail tags in Nebraska are the fewer than 100 offered each year by the Omaha tribe on its native reservation. And the man for Steve Stoltz to see is the reservation's director of wildlife and parks, Mike Tyndall. Steve's here hunting with Whitetail Revolution and the key to his success is gonna be patient. I think the best habitat available for take a trophy animal is in these timbered areas. You know, one of the things about hunting the Omaha Indian Reservation for me is I'm not real familiar with the reservation. So I've got to get familiar with where some of the key places are. This is 170,000 acres and it's vast, very diversified. River hills, you got farmland. With the secretive whitetail, Stoltz will have his work cut out to find the hot spots on the reservation. In Southwest Nebraska, Willie Schmidt's hunting prime private land along the Platte. We're in uh, southwest Nebraska on the North Platte River. I've hunted ducks here for probably five or six years and had the opportunity to deer hunt here two years ago with Miles Fiscus. And I know the quality of bucks that are here. And hunting the North Platte River, these big whitetails can be fantastic. Someone else who knows the quality of Nebraska deer is rock guitarist and native cornhusker Steve Ferris. Famous as a waterfowler, Ferris is also dedicated to whitetails. I know what's going on in western Nebraska. We have a, first of all, we have very large deer, almost Saskatchewan type sized deer, but we also have great genetics and great, uh, great trophy quality out here. I think it's not uncommon for us on these properties to be producing 150 class whitetail all day long, but there also are some monsters and that's what we want to keep uh, shooting for and I think more and more about that is the discipline of not shooting the small ones and letting the small ones grow into big ones. Southern Nebraska, the Platte River that runs across there and that I-80 corridor that runs across southern Nebraska just holds tons and tons of game. There's deer, there's turkey, uh, the waterfowl that comes through there is amazing. If you can get a place uh, to hunt, the deer are, are really fun to hunt in that area for the simple fact that it's river, it's timber, and it's wide open country. So the deer are going to be in that timber next to the river. I've been waiting for this for a long time. Got this light, it's cold, about 28 degrees, light snow on the ground, about two, three inches. Should be perfect. Makes for some good quiet walking as well as uh, get those rutting bucks fired up. We're going to go set up next to one of these big round hay bales. Don't want to get into where there's a bedding area and there'll be a transition coming from food. So we'll set back from the edge of the trees about 100, 150 yards. Rattle and grunt, spend a little time there, see if we can't pull something out. <laughs> Feels like a deer hunt morning, doesn't it? Little breeze, crisp, cold, clear. Get these deer on their feet. Clear the light point. In northeast Nebraska, the whitetail have some 170,000 acres of habitat to roam across on the Omaha Indian Reservation. So for Steve Stoltz to find the trophy buck he's after, he first has some extensive scouting ahead of him to learn the land he's on. When you're not familiar with the ground, you have to get to know the terrain, you have to scout. There's a lot of tracks in here going right along this terrace. Not a lot of bucks in there, although they are traveling through here. It's a natural bottleneck right here. Right here, scrapes. Right here, got licking branches. I'm looking for big rub. I'm looking for scrapes. There's a buck working a scrape right here. I'm looking for big tracks. But what I'm not seeing is big tracks. I see deer tracks, but not, of course it's been dry, so big tracks aren't gonna show up that good. Anything that's telling me where these bucks are keying in on. Might be another one. I think I found another one down here. 
Bingo. Bada boom. Look at here. Scrapes, multiple scrapes on her big looking branch. Got the structure. I'll tell you what, we're gonna put a trail camera here. Here's a trail camera right here. So that's perfect. Let me check and see if that's lined up. We've been scouting all day. Got some great spots located. We're just gonna go up here on this terrace, kind of glass these fields to see if there's anything out in it. Oh yeah, there's two does. Looks like they came out of that timber to the left. We got to see a, a true albino whitetail. I have never seen an albino whitetail. I was pumped, even though it was just a doe. Maybe a white deer, like a white buffalo, will be a sign of good fortune. And maybe tomorrow, Steve and Willie will find that the bucks they are looking for are in their sights. <laughs> this is Nebraska's Platte River, where whitetail expert Willie Schmidt is working his grunt call to bring in a buck. <laughs> wind event happen here in the Midwest. Dangerous high winds, 50, 60 mile an hour wind. We gotta go to them. We're gonna change up the tactics a little bit and we're gonna start walking some of these bedding areas and uh, try a little spot and stalk, see if we can see one before he sees us. Feel better out here? and in the timber with his wind. right up on one actually. Right here, right here. It's a little buck, right there. And I walked right up on that deer. He's just standing there looking at me. He don't know what he saw. It's so windy. That's a little spiky. I am... Um, looking for bigger antlers than that because there could be a buck laying right with him that has not seen me yet. It's so windy and these deer are not bedded far from feed so we're just going to keep pushing on follow this buck sign and slowly work our way back to hopefully a bigger buck. There's a lot of huge rubs in here. I mean big rubs. While Schmidt is working deer on private land in the southwest part of the state, on the Omaha Reservation, Steve Stoltz is having to buck the wind that is keeping the deer down. We're kind of at the end of the property. We'll see if we can pull something from the other side.
I'm going to drive up here now and uh, meet Steve Ferris, my partner in the hunting property. He killed a giant buck apparently today on a different property, different part of Nebraska, just 45 minutes away. Now the Platte River in, in, of Nebraska is famous for big whitetails. I consider it to be one of the best places in the country and probably one of the least talked about great places in the country for big whitetails. In fact, I plan to hunt it next year myself. Oh my. How about that, Will Schmidt? Look at that. That is some bone. That's a, that's Nebraska whitetail right there. A lot of people think of me as a waterfowl hunter, but I think the back of my truck speaks for itself. That thing has some character, some mat, that's got everything. <laughs> Congratulations. I, just, yeah, I mean, geez. I mean, can you imagine? I walked up and had everything. And he scored what? 197, 68. That is one heck of a deer. At 196 and 6 eighths, Ferris has an outstanding whitetail. But outstanding whitetails are nothing new to Nebraska. Over the years, the state has produced hundreds of record book typical and non-typical heads, including deer in both categories and the all-time top 10. And those bucks having gone into the book in just the last two years. One thing for sure, whatever the weather's like on the private land on the Platte, up on the Omaha Reservation, it's going to be different and subject to change without notice. the last afternoon of our hunt here at Omaha Indian Reservation. Here lately we've been ha having good luck sifting in bedding areas and walking right up on deer. They don't even know they're, they don't know we're there. I, maybe we'll get lucky and pull a rabbit out of our hat. Moving again from the reservation to the plat, Schmidt is trying to establish his boundaries. We just crossed the slough to go do a couple of setups in some of these openings. Nearly all the bucks have their nose to the ground. So we're gonna run a drag line. So what we have is some code blue standing estrus. We'll dip a few, few of these sort of tentacles on this drag line in here. Put this to a belt or belt loop. Something behind you. We just drag them down for the long even scent as it goes. Make our way to the next setup and spend a little time there. Wasn't super, super huge, but I'd have been proud of that buck. What a great experience hunting here at the Omaha Indian Reservation. Unfortunately, we weren't successful. This is a best kept secret in Nebraska, the Omaha Indian Reservation, loaded with whitetails. I'm really optimistic about my next trip here, and uh, thanks to Mike Tyndall for having Whitetail Revolution on another great hunt. A muy grande buck may have eluded Steve Stoltz on his hunt on the Omaha Reservation, but the book isn't closed yet on Willie Schmidt down along the Platte River. That's borderline. Yeah, he's a good, respectable nine point. That's a tough one. We know there's bigger ones and better quality bucks here. But that was a, that was a pretty cool encounter. We'll move a couple hundred yards this way and go give it another shot. Get around this rush and all, and I think I got several openings to shoot from. I like this spot. Opening up there, opening there, opening behind right. Great buck, he came in, came into the rattle and the grunt and a bleat, just like you want. Stepped out in the open, just looked up at us, 
Man, I put that 270 right in the front of the left shoulder, and he didn't go 40, 50 yards. I don't think I need to worry about a blood trail. Let's go see what these uh, XP3 bullets did to him. Man, I see Brown. Boy, that uh, XP3 did its trick. You know, I am thrilled with this buck. We've hunted hard, we've seen bigger ones, but if you always hold out for the bigger ones, sometimes you don't get one. And, uh, and sometimes that's okay. And I think this is a good representative buck of the area. Good Nebraska buck, I couldn't be happier. Now we gotta worry about getting him across the river.